collect <laughs> various things that I either recommend or I have tried that I would recommend or don't. <laughs> okay, first I'm going to start out with this is everybody needs, everybody who has a multiprocessor machine, particularly a fast one, needs this ACPI. It fixes a hang on full screen switch, and that's full screen switch with any OS2 shell and with DOS that it takes. So, <clears throat> um, I also had periodic hangs um, from Firefox and ZMonkey, which since I've installed this, I haven't had another one. Now, I don't know that it's fixed because I haven't had it installed long enough, but, <clears throat> and um, Doug said reported that uh, a hang that he was getting where, where he would start a video when the audio was playing seems to have gone away. It seems to now do the correct thing, which is it doesn't let the video play an audio stream since OS2 can only play one. <clears throat> a few things about um, Arc OS install. Just a couple things to look at. If you, it automatically installs one CD drive, which gives you a phantom drive. And so if you don't have a USB drive, you probably want to go in and just not have it do that. Also, there have been a few people who couldn't get USB floppies to work. That's because it doesn't install it. It has to specify floppies one or could be more than one. So that if you happen to be somebody who's trying to use USB floppy, you have to make sure you go in and change that. <clears throat> if you um, have driver traps or other problems, there's a few things you can do. One, you can just go in, there's an option to go in and edit the config.sys, and if the driver isn't completely essential, in other words, you can't rim out your hard drive <coughs> controller, but if it's something that you could live without, you can just rem it out and see if you can continue. The other thing you can do is you can use, you can select either Alt F2 or Alt F4 so you can actually see what's happening. You can see what's being loaded when your problem occurs. <clears throat> um, peer networking, when you're installing it, Make sure you either install NetBIOS or NetBIOS over TCPI, which is not installed by default. Otherwise, it doesn't work because <clears throat> it needs one of those protocols. If you're planning on using Samba at the same time, you need to use NetBIOS because Samba and NetBIOS over TCPI uses the same port. So only one of them is going to work. There probably is a way to reset the port for one or the other, but mm. who knows? Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure I do that. And then a lot of machines, a lot of modern machines have USB 2 ports, but they do not have a USB 2 controller. They're actually using the USB 3 controller to drive those ports. Those won't work. It has to have a USB 3 or 2 controller. <clears throat> Alt boot, I mean, this is a recap, really, of what Lewis just went through, so I will just sort of skip over it. <clears throat> um, one of the things I normally do is remove the drivers I don't need <laughs> from the config.sys. It cleans it up. Most of them don't load because they don't find the hardware, and so it really doesn't take up extra memory generally. There are probably a few ill-behaved ones that load. <clears throat> Um, and those happen to be the ones, the one thing you don't want it to do is um, remove the duplicate USB base drivers because each controller needs its own. So if you see four of those in there, that's just because you have four controllers. And if you take, take one or more of them out, bad things happen. <clears throat> if you're not gonna use DOS or Windows, <clears throat> You probably want to set the machine to protect only just a BIOS, just a set command. And um, then you'll want to go in and remove the uh, alt merge 
control drivers, because particularly Nets networking doesn't care. It doesn't <laughs> care if you didn't install DOS. It still installs all the drive, all the virtual drivers. So you just want to get them out of there because it simply is cluttering out the config.sys. I use use for OS2 as my native shell. In other words, uh, OS2 shell command in config.sys, I pointed to for OS2. It behaves badly enough with, or in my thinking, the Rex programs behave badly with it. So there are things like um, even ANPN, you can't install it using 4OS2. It does bizarre things. So I now basically, when I set up for my programming, I just run, I change the OS2 shell in my CMD file that I use to set up the programming environment. So <clears throat> this is kind of a list of uh, things that you have some problems with. The real advantage of it is that unlike CMD, which is never going to get another fix, probably of any kind, I guess you could patch, try to patch it, but <clears throat> good luck with that. We have the source for this, so it can be fixed. And I'm one of the people that contributed to that. I know someone thought they had a problem with it, so if they want to talk to me about it, <coughs> I'd be happy to look into it. couple of things. Um, hmm. There was actually a ticket put in about the directory command not working with uh, 4OS2. It never was meant to. 4OS2 is not simply a super set of CMD. It's its own shell. And there are separate ways, including, which are primarily aliases, for changing the directory command on it. So that's one that you just have to realize there. You have a 4OS2 any and a 4 start CMD. Um, the any sets up a bunch of different parameters. And if you run options to exe, it gives you a GUI front end to it. So you can change. Um, well, you can add aliases into that to always get loaded. You can also add aliases into the 4 start command. Or you can have it load a separate alias file, which you create. You can save aliases. And they're very nice, because if you are regularly running some command line that has, <coughs> you know, 50 characters to type it in, you can set it up as an alias, as a single, single letter, and just hit the single letter, and it runs all those commands. So if you do command line, I would encourage you to use 4OS2 for that command line work. Is the directory, no, that directory, dir command is to give the CMD command yeah. the uh, attributes, show the attribute. Uh, right. Is there a convenient way to do that in 4OS2? I, I run mm -hmm. DIR and I have a 4OS2 window open and DIR works. Oh, yeah, DIR works. works. But make, make this, is, this is a set command. It tells it how to, how to yeah. configure what you see so in the display DIR. changes. Right. Oh, if yeah, this is a display, yeah. this is this is how to set it up. Yes, there is. Oh, okay. You just do it with an alias. Okay. <clears throat> Let's see if I can find my way back. It's pretty sensitive, huh? <laughs> <laughs> it really is. I'm going to yeah. use just the, the mouse buttons. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Yeah. Here's some command line switches that you at least should understand. The, the FAT32, this is not the Arganoa FAT32, this is the NetLabs FAT32, where you can get both EXFAT and FAT to work. Oh. Is um, EXFAT really working? 
I don't know because okay. I don't I don't have any way to check it because okay. I don't have anything that has it. Wow. <clears throat> cool. But um, the fat actually, I think the fat switch still does work in the Argo Res one. At least I'm not aware of anybody <laughs> having taken it out. Uh, I think. Uh, yeah, I don't think Andy's removed that. Yeah. I think, yeah, I, I think it's still there. The, the 5.0.0 release, you could still use Yeah, we still, we still have all you can still use VFAT. Crazy DLLs in there, but it's not yeah. supported. So if you have a VFAT issue with the ARCA OS FAT32 driver, please do not open and take it for it. It's not supported. Yeah. <clears throat> um, EAs has been broken off and on. And probably by default, you probably shouldn't use them unless you have a really good reason why you want to use them. Um, whether it's working in 5.0.0, I'm not entirely clear. I mean, it, it works to an extent. It'll create them and stuff like that, but they get broken pretty easily, especially if you switch between a system that has slash EAs on the command line and one that doesn't. <clears throat> it does some weird things because what it does is it pulls the EAs off of where they're normally kept and puts it into a file like the like on a fat drive mm -hmm. and then it tries to put them back and it doesn't do very good <clears throat> um, one of the other things you might want to try to drop in, to do is add slash n slash f um, it allows if you've got multiple programs that are writing to a disk, this will allow the disk <coughs> to order the writes. In other words, it will accept multiple requests, and then it can order the writes so that it minimizes head movement, which speeds up the system a little bit. It's off by default. I guess the, the message here is be careful with it. There may be some systems that it does not work well with. The slash F tells it to force use of the hardware cache, which um, JFS sort of tells it to not use the hardware cache. Mm -hmm. And so the slash F forces that. <clears throat> and then um, the virtual address limit, I've heard everything on those various ones. You probably want it higher if you're using a bunch of the big Linux programs. Firefox is one of them, obviously. Open Office is one of them. And um, uh, the Virus Checker Clam AC are all <clears throat> really huge programs. And especially if you're trying to run them all together, you may, you may want to increase that. But it's just one of those things you're going to have to experiment with. <coughs> there have been recent requests or um, reports that that particular driver, but it may be all the multi-MAC drivers because no one has really tested it. And um, Enjoy Firewall do not play well together. And uh, I just read, it's actually in the ticket on Argo OS, <laughs> that, uh, <coughs> that the Enjoy people, Bitwise basically, has fixed the problem. And I don't, don't know when it'll be released. They're testing it right now, but the person who put in the ticket record, reported that at least with this driver it works. And <clears throat> a couple of other odd things is DOS low, no UMB. I tried to change to DOS high UMB. However, it traps, at least on my system, if the UMB switch is on that particular driver. And I think if it's missing either place, you don't have UMB support. But, um, so you may need to, in other words, your mileage may vary on that one. In fact, I meant to check to see if the new ACPI fixed that too. <laughs> That would be a surprise. <laughs> yes, it would be. What's UMB upper memory? <coughs> and that's upper memory blocks. That just gives, obviously, your DOS session a little bit of extra memory to use. Um, <clears throat> I have VCompat. VCompat provides the two gigabyte support 
in other words, drives that are of various sizes, bigger than two gigabytes, confuse Oz to no end, even show them as negative in size. Um, <clears throat> the V2 gigabyte uh, sys is also a driver that does that. These both be for being virtual drivers, they don't take up any of your precious DOS memory space because they're external to it, they're running in the OS2 side. Um, there are a couple of Terminate and Stay residents that do the same thing, but they do eat up memory. <clears throat> and um, this one, this is VCompat, and this is the V2GB driver where they're located. <clears throat> and so, again, if you need them to run in DOS, then these, the VCompat also fixes timing issues with old DOS games. So, you know, if you're a fan of old DOS games, you probably want it. And I use for DOS, which is the equivalent of for OS2, only for DOS. Um, video issues. There are a lot of machines that the window, DOS windows won't run. Now, some of them are fixed by this <clears throat> switch being used on VSVGA and um, this changed auto execute VAT. You just add the two lines. This is two separate lines. Mode COAB and clear are on two separate, two different lines. This is line one line and this is the line below it. And that will get the, in some systems, that allows you to run. It doesn't give you the, the odd message, what is it? This, this session won't run in this room or something like that. Um, if you can get your, if your full screen works, which it does in a lot of systems, it's also broken in multiple different ways on different systems. But if your full screen works, you can oftentimes hit Alt F11 and turn it into a window, and that will actually work. Um, as you can see, there's a whole bunch of switches in those drivers. I can't tell you that any of them would fix any of the other ones, but I don't think anybody knows for certain, so. They're all undocumented. Yeah, I know. And even their names don't help you very much mm -hmm. into guessing what they might do. So, you know, if you really, really need DOS and you're having this problem, and the one that we know <coughs> works doesn't work, there's probably no harm in trying those other switches and see if one or more of them will solve the problem in your case. If it does, report it back to us. <clears throat> Again, um, I talked about the switch, and on my system, I was getting the same hang on opening the full screen DOS that I was getting on opening full screen OS2s. So the ACPI fix fixed that particular problem. So if that's what you're getting, what, what basically you get is you get a, a screen that looks like it's got a piece of woven cloth on it and nothing else works from there except <clears throat> control, numlock, numlock. Sometimes if you have a PS2 keyboard plugged in, if USB stack is gone, amongst other things when that happens. Um, also, there are some systems where DOS works in a window, but WinOS 2 does not. On some of those, people have found that playing with the video settings for the WinOS 2 sessions actually will fix it. And no specific ones, but if you just go in and look up the video settings, which you can go in and just try different combinations, turning things on and off. And you may find one that works. It's not, again, it's like the other DOS video issues. It, nothing, this is 100%. <clears throat> I always sort my config is This one by Doug Bissett, which is available on Hobbs, is, he seems to have done a pretty good job at getting it right. Um, the new um, USB stack breaks it 
because they change the order that the drives are supposed the drivers are loaded in because of timing issues on fast machines. Um, but other than that, and you just have to be aware of it, that this tool works fine. There's also an old tool configurable, and this is not a sorter. This is one that will go in and make <coughs> suggestions for you to, it will allow you to compare to config.sys. It also makes some suggestions and things like that. It's old enough now that you're going to find that it's, there's a lot of drivers and stuff, but it just doesn't know what they are. It, what, probably 2001, something like that was right. when it was last developed. Um, but it's still good. The real problem is, is that they use the any file format for their um, database of this, and it's basically maxed out. The any file format is good up to, well, it's limited in size. Its tools don't work well. And so it would be real hard even to add those additional entries in. In other words, if you add the entries in, you'll probably break the database. <clears throat> okay. Um, I always use a mouse even on ThinkPads, but the S mouse has some advantages on ThinkPads in that it probably supports the track point better than. Um, and you'll find there's a thing called multipoint.exe. It is loaded automatically. You'll find that it's running on all of your systems, and it's part of S mouse. And guess what? A mouse doesn't know it exists and has no use whatsoever for it. So basically, it's taking up memory <coughs> and churning through because it, it's running constantly. It actually is always idling. In other words, I, I think it's looking for interrupts or something. And um, <clears throat> it's loaded in wpconfig.dll. And IBM, in their infinite wisdom, left you no way to turn it off, except, of course, renaming it something else. But if you do that, and you, for some reason, switch back to S mouse, don't forget to rename it back to EXE, or you'll have some other interesting problems. <clears throat> uh, the new loader has some nice features. Um, you can create a RAM disk, and it'll actually use memories above the four gig limit. So it's pretty nice. And I have a machine that four, has four gigs, and I still get about a 500 megabyte um, RAM disk that is just wasted memory on that machine, because that's the amount of the memory that's being eaten up by BIOS and other things, and you know, video driver, video space and stuff like that. So I only have about 300 and 3.5 gigabytes of reusable RAM, and this allows me to use the other five megabytes. <clears throat> it would be nice if you could use it for something beyond just a RAM disk, but I do at least put my temp files on it, and those last are all of my config.sys, which that combination loads the temp, puts the temp files onto that RAM disk, which in my case is the <clears throat> it can also limit memory, which inherently doesn't seem very useful until you've tried to go through a four gigabyte uh, trap dump file. So usually what they'll do is ask you if you if you need to get a trap dump for some some analysis, they'll ask you to limit the memory to as small as you can get for it to still run. 256 doesn't work very good. I tried it. But so 512 is probably practically the smallest, but that way it's much easier to review the trap dump because it's that much smaller. And Greg, uh, when you use RAM disk for your, your temporary directory, do you feel the, the performance enhancement? You yeah, yeah, I do. <laughs> I, I notice it when I'm building software that uses okay. the temp that uses temp directory. You probably don't in normal use, but if I'm building some huge files 
where yeah. where it's putting the, its interim build products into the temp directory, yeah, it's faster. But I think, like I said, I think in normal use, you probably, it, it, well, it probably is faster, you probably wouldn't really notice. <clears throat> um, for X Center, um, I always replace the, the whatever it is, with L Switcher, the, <clears throat> the program switcher that comes with uh, with X Center. I was, and you know, it's not like I'm biased. It's just that I'm a maintainer of L Switcher, so um, <clears throat> it has some it has some enhancements that, that make it nice. You can set a program priority directly from it if if that's an issue that you is important to you. Um, it also is much more configurable, so that you can you can set it as icon only, for example, so that you can still on a small piece of real estate see a lot more of your programs. It's got other uses, other improvements, which I'll talk about in a little bit. Um, and also you want to remove unused pro plugins because whether you have installed the plugin or not, X Center loads <coughs> its DLL into memory, eating up a little bit of your precious low shared memory. Um, so if you're not using it, and it's real simple, you can just go in and rename it. Just take the last L off of the DLL, and then it won't load it because it is no longer sees it as an executable file. Um, the the biggest defender is XWLAN. Um, if you don't. If you either don't have a driver that'll drive a Wi-Fi, wi or you don't have Wi-Fi on a computer, that's the first thing you want to get rid of, is it's DLL. Because it is really cantankerous. It doesn't unlock even when you close that center, and <clears throat> you have to manually unlock <coughs> the game, and then you have to, at minimum, restart the desktop, and at maximum, um, reboot. And Lewis and I both learned you can get a trap eight out of it too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that was the Easter egg today. Yeah. <laughs> it happened to it happened to us what within minutes of each other. <laughs> and again that's the one drawback is that X Center and everything running in X Center is actually part of the desktop process. It's not a separate process. I always, the, the other thing is I always add it to a screen order so you can bring your mouse down and it'll come back up if you've closed it. Um, one of the other developers thinks that's abhorrent, so it doesn't ship that way, but, <laughs> so that's one of the first things you want to do is go in and you can, in work, you can either do it in the properties of, of X Center. There's a checkbox that says, add, you know, add to screen borders, or you can go into screen borders and actually add it manually. <clears throat> okay, um, reboot two options um, is these are things that the AN X workplace doesn't have that the full X workplace does have. Um, reboot two. You can pick, when you go into reboot, you can pick what it'll bring up to reboot. And what it really does is it just issues that command, set boot, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I found that with air boot, though, the current one, with boot manager, you actually got a list to choose from. With air boot, you don't get the list. Now you can get the list, I mean, it comes up at the beginning with Airboot that tells you what the names of the partitions are. Those are simply the partition names. That ECS dot dash N is the name of one of my partitions. Um, you can actually manually do that. All you have to do is type that line with the partition name, make sure you quote it, because it also does bad things if you don't, because it truncates them <laughs> to the space, so it won't find them. Turbo folders is another one. It changes the behavior of associations. Um, it's associated by type instead of by 
extension, and then you have to go back in and associate the extensions with the type once you've made this change. It's <laughs> probably something you want to avoid. It does speed up a little bit some folder behavior and stuff like that in addition, but probably not worth the uh, grief that it creates with the, with the way the associations work. It was probably more useful at the time it was developed based upon the, the relative speed of the systems that were available. But now our systems are so fast that a lot of these slights of hand that were useful 15 years ago are just not as useful anymore. And if you are going to make the change, you probably want to get the program association edit, associate it, which you can find on HOMS, which allows you to actually set up OS2 associations, which for reasons that have never been clear to me, there is no clear way to do in OS2. <laughs> and then it also gives you its settings object, where you can change the settings of X word in place. Um, that is not included with the, the light version, as it were. Archimapper, uh, not exactly the ideal tool. Um, <clears throat> But a couple of things. If you want to restart your shares at boot up, have them automatically restart. Um, there are two ways to do it. One is auto start, which doesn't work well at all. And the other is net drives volume persistence. Um, you have to go into the net drives configuration file and basically unremark it because it's, it's rimmed out. And you want to do that before you do anything else as far as setting up shares. <coughs> um, <clears throat> auto start, it's idea of minimized, is a bar about this wide across your screen. <clears throat> but you're not sure what it's doing. Uh, that's how it, it starts. I guess it's actually, the other one is actually fixed where it just tells you that it failed to unload it. Um, but it's pretty easy to fix because all it is is it's a program that got stuck into your, um, your auto start folder. So all you have to do is pull it out if it does fail to unload it. But I, like I said, I think the very latest version, that was one of the things that got fixed. Yeah. And you definitely don't want to use both because the first one will load them and then the second one will give you a series of of errors telling you that they're loaded. <coughs> so it's, it's really fun. And I, it, I'm really wondering what would happen if they both hit it at exactly the same time. Nothing good, I can tell you that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you have to make sure that, um, that, it, that server IP address is available to it somehow. I mean, you can put them into the to the et cetera files, uh, um, the host file, but otherwise it won't find it. It just gives you errors. Um, obviously, if you're using DHCP, it has the problem that if you put it in the host file, and then at some point the uh, IP address for something changes, you may have some interesting results from that. Um, most home networks, that's probably not going to happen simply because it, most of the stuff is, in other words, you're not changing stuff enough, but in other settings it can be a big problem. Um, you can, most routers you can set so that they give the same IP address to the same device, which is one solution. Obviously you could use static um, IP address is also for your server, at least. Um, <clears throat> and this is another one of the things that does not play well with 4 OS 2. So you can just go in and kill Zem in the background after it has collapsed. Um, it also, um, in the advanced mount options, which number one are hard to find, 
because of the second page of a notebook, but there's nothing obvious except that you can see page one of two on it. Um, all of the um, advanced options are selected by default, even though they're mutually exclusive. So I don't know which ones win. <laughs> so the first thing you want to do is, unless you, unless you know you need one or more of them, just go in and uncheck them before you start. <clears throat> um, Arca Mapper also doesn't load its settings from Samba Configure. It will write to Samba Configure, but it does not load its settings. So what the configure file says you have and what it says you have may be completely two different things. I would just recommend don't ever let it write to Samba Configure. If you need to change something, then just go in and manually change it. Um, the verbose logs, if you set log to t level 10, um, you can fill a five gigabyte hard drive in a couple of hours. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you only want to turn it up that verbose. If you really have, if you know what your problem is, you want to quickly run through your problem scenario and then you want to turn the log back down to something reasonable too, probably. Um, it doesn't support network printing. Um, there is an F SMB um, printer port, support driver for printing that you can use. Um, it has at least one oddity in that if your printer on the box that you're printing to is hooked to a parallel port, the SMB print EXE doesn't work because for whatever reason it doesn't find parallel ports. Fortunately, there is a workaround. You can actually use print EXE to print the spool to, to print the spooler. You can set that up in the SAMBA server settings. And <clears throat> the big problem is it doesn't delete the spool files. I solved that just by having a CMD file that runs every night and deletes all the spool files of that directory. Hi, ma'am. These are the <coughs> those are the apps that just eat memory. Now, none of them are set by default to run in Hi, ma'am. That's because there are some stability issues again on some hardware. So, you can use either Hi, ma'am exe, which is actually included with um, Open Office, or you can use um, exe header exe, which is installed on Arch OS. And you just set the DLLs to load high. Um, you probably don't want to set the EXEs to load high, and you don't want to set resource DLLs to load high. Um, obviously, what that does is that saves your low shared memory or just your low memory. <clears throat> the real reason that everything is in well, first of all, part of the part of the OS two interface is not capable of being loaded high. There's a bunch of the DOS calls out of DOS 1 DLL that are still 16-bit. So they don't see anything up there. So all, all you do is you end up with them lost because they can't find their, um, their variables and things like that. Um, so that's one of the reasons. Obviously, those could all be wrappered so they would work, but <clears throat> obviously on all old software, nobody's doing that. Um, you can hide your floppy icons if you want. Um, <clears throat> you go to drive folders, and basically those are the instructions. Attribute title compared to is equal to, and, and you can just eliminate it. Um, and in FM2, you can just add that to the command line, the slash A, B, um, percent, semicolon. And that way, when it comes up, it will come up without those two icons. Obviously, those two icons aren't very useful on computers that don't have floppy disks. <laughs> Clock sync, it's a little tool that I like. Um, <clears throat> 
it syncs with the time servers. Um, probably best to have a pick a time server that's close to your location. Um, that one happens to be in Denver, so it's pretty close to me. Um, you can also use it to update the time zone string if you know someone is nastily changed the date that we changed from daylight savings time to standard time. <laughs> Um, IFX, we talked a little bit about it earlier. Um, <clears throat> it basically cleans and checks your inner <coughs> files. Um, it can, you can use it to back up and restore, but it is clearly not a replacement for any of the full any checkers. Uh, check any, clean any are the two that I can use most commonly. Um, I do use Unimate occasionally. And RWS um, is not technically an any cleaner, but it has um, it has a program associated with it where it will identify um, icons, for example, that have been loaded into OS2 any, which are simply duplicates of the icon that it would have anyway. So it's just stuff that's taking up space that is unnecessary. And this gets back to the fact that the any file tools are size limited above, above some threshold. I don't think anybody's really clear what that threshold is. The system starts to break down. There's a WP tools check any. Is that the same as the one on top? Yeah. Oh. yeah. <clears throat> These are useful utilities. These are things that I basically install as soon as I install the operating system, except for the last one because the operating system installs that mm -hmm. one. Um, <clears throat> ClipView is a wonderful tool. Um, change your various viewers, quite configurable. I think you can have 22 lines and you can actually have, you can actually use run multiple ones where you would if you have, say, 15 things that you just use every day, you can put them on a separate one of these and um, just lock them all so they never get changed. Um, we will at some point include ClipView in ArcOS. Um, ClipView was written by a very dear friend of mine, Dave Seville, um, who passed away a couple of years ago. And I got permission from his widow Zena to get all of Dave's work. Um, and one of his buddies over in the UK has his development machine. And it's just a matter of working out the details so we can get the code. But ClipView is one of those applications that we want to continue to maintain. It's extremely uh, useful. And all, uh, all modern Linux distributions have the ability for using multiple clipboard so we, want to, we definitely want to include that. Yeah, and it is a very nice utility, and uh, it's available on Hobbs. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, screen capture utility. Um, gotcha is one that I adopted and have been working on. I have create, I've gotten it to the point now that I have what I call Gotcha Quiet, which just I, you just run it from the startup folder and it captures all the print screen keys, all the combinations. Print screen and shift print screen will basically print the screen to file, and it'll print the screen, a window, an interior of a window or a screen region, depending on how you have it set. Um, you can have it so that it will prompt you for a file name or it will create a file name for you, um, again however you want it set. And um, <clears throat> it also, well, alt print screen actually pulls up its settings, so you can see it. But it, it is a um, object window, which means there's no trace of anywhere in the operating system. You, you, it's not gonna be appear in any program lists, it's not in the Windows list. I'm not even sure if it comes up in CAD. <laughs> I don't, I don't, I don't think, so. Um, I think so, but it's, um, so 
that I hope to release shortly. In fact, I have a few questions on a, on a sli <coughs> upcoming slide about how to, how to implement the, the, kind of the kind of final couple of pieces of the interface. Um, I, was in, I, I use J-Calendar, but there, there are several other simple calendars out there. And by that, I just want something that shows me the date. I'm not looking for an information manager. L-Switcher, we talked about a little bit earlier. NCFTP um, is the FTP client that I now use. Um, I just find that it, it works quite nicely. And oh, oh, it's a very interesting program. Um, Rich Walsh, isn't it? Mm -hmm. um, this is for manipulating OS2 objects. It, it basically, it's a text mode, but it'll do anything you can do with Rex and more because it'll actually do it on any object, not just files and folders. And I'm not gonna go into all of its uses, but you know, if you want to change from, without going into its, all of its settings and everything, if you want to change a view in a, in a particular folder, you can use this to change the view. <coughs> or change the startup screens for any, full, any object so that you can manipulate them pretty much any way you want. And this ships with Arc OS and it's in the sysbin file, so it's, in, it's actually in the path. Okay, a little bit about Gotcha. I talked about this a little bit. Um, <clears throat> I also, anybody who's ever used Gotcha, it also has a, a regular version that runs. I have not eliminated that. I've fixed some of the problems with it, but I, it's still, so you can still run the one where you actually push the button that says I want to capture a window or I want to capture, and actually you can do it in Gotcha Quiet too because that's the, its front page is the front page of the settings notebook so that you can go in and manually decide how to capture something if you want to do something on a one dime basis. Um, <clears throat> a couple other things it does is it will do a delay, which means the problem with it is if you try to screen capture something with a, with a menu open, because it grabs focus, it closes the menu. But what I can do is I can pick the window to capture on a delay and then go open the menu and it'll capture it with the menu after when it captures after the delay. <clears throat> and like I said, you can manually initiate the capture out of the um, options. You can auto name the files. <coughs> you can actually do multiple serial captures with it. In other words, I can just tell it, capture the screen every 30 seconds, and it will just continue to capture the screen every 30 seconds until I tell it to stop. Where, where do you get it? You don't right now. So, you, well, actually, actually, if you if 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 you're really nice to me, I'll, I I could probably copy you one. But I actually I don't really have the newest one because I haven't committed all the code and I forgot to bring it. And so I built it out of what's in the S S V N, which is missing. It at least is missing the new icons. <laughs> but it it works, so I think it's pretty close to the newest code. I, like I said, I hope to release it probably in the next month or so. And, and it will be included with a later version of Arca OS. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And available during the installation routine. So oh. when you run into a problem with the installer, you'll be able to take a picture of the screen in the installer. And when you submit your ticket, you can say, this is what I saw. Instead of saying, you know, I'm sure I saw this during the store, and then we all sit down and say, no. <laughs> Couldn't possibly have seen that. So now you'll be able to provide proof. But save it to your RAM drive and. Save it to your RAM drive or, or save, it to, save it to the root of the USB stick? If you have a USB stick, that's ideal. ideal. Yeah. But yeah, the, the DVD, maybe. But save it, <laughs> yeah, save save it, it to your ring. DVD. <laughs> Save it to the RAM drive and then go to the system management console and mm -hmm. upload it from, and open uh, Aurora from there and open your ticket oh, and attach it. Oh, nice. Okay. Right yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, here's my two design questions. 
I'm thinking about adding a command line switch that will allow people to keep the IBM print screen behavior, in other words, print directly to a printer if they wish. I have no idea why anybody wanted, it, but um, that's one of my considerations. So if anyone has any strong feelings about that, in other words, what would happen is if you hit print screen, it'll go to the printer. If you hit shift print screen, it, it would go to a file. If you hit control print screen, it would go to the clipboard. And if you hit alt print screen, you get the settings. Uh, right now, print screen goes to a file because, like I said, I don't see any use for the first one. But if there are people who have a use case for it, I'd be willing to add that switch. It really isn't a huge effort. And um, right now, the manual capture, where you pull up the settings and then pick capture window or whatever you pick, the settings do not reopen after the capture. So the question with that is, should the settings window reopen automatically? And it's settable. You can se actually set it so it reopens. But it, by default, doesn't. So those are, my two, those are my two last design decisions that I have to make. I probably have one more. But I... OK, L switcher, the task switcher. Um, it's either freestanding or an XN or plug-in. You can't run both at the same time. <clears throat> it does bad things. Um, actually, it doesn't now. It just won't let you do it. <laughs> but uh, at one time, it did some really bad things. Um, <clears throat> you can group the icons together. What that means that if I have six different um, four OS2 <coughs> windows open, that they're all stacked on top of each other. They're not strung out along the bar. And then I can just click on it, and it'll give me the list of all six of them. And I can just pick it, pick the one of the six, if I can figure out which one it is. Uh, <clears throat> you can set priority. It does everything that, that the Windows switcher does in OS 2 with you know, max, min, tile, cascade, close, kill, uh, those things that it doesn't do, too. And then it also has a pop-up. It's um, Alt-Tab will pop up a window, just like the, the OS2 window list. And you can work it from there as opposed to from the task bars. And if you're in a full screen session, Alt-Tab will open up a pop-up in your full screen session. Yeah. And then you can pick a DOS session and if it's a DOS full screen session, Alt Tab will open up that pop up in the DOS full screen session and let you pick from there. That's assuming you loaded the Terminate and Stay Resident if you program. Load the DOS TSR. Yeah. yeah. Have you seen issues when switching programs and hangs the system and requires reboot? I have not. I mean, I, I've seen all kinds of things that have hung systems, mostly my own lousy programming. But I have not seen that with any consistency, nor have I had anybody report that with L Switcher. Now, in ECS 2.1, I've used L Switcher probably a decade, and there was ECS 2.1, and I think it was 2.71 version. It's almost every day. And I removed L Switcher, and the problem never came again. And warp, when it was on Warp 4, with whatever version it was, it was never a problem. Do, did you get anything in the OS2 pop-up log or anything like that? No, it doesn't do anything. It just... Which which version were you using? The standalone? Or the, the standalone, yeah. Um, it was... Uh, the system was becoming more unstable all the time. It was always hang, 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 reboot, reboot, almost every day. And I couldn't figure out what... Because I've used it for so long. Mm -hmm. But then I tried it. I just disabled it and never had it again. But it's, I miss it. It would be nice to have it. Have you tried the newest version? What is the latest number? I don't know. You remember? 2.8. No, it's 2.9.0. Two, nine oh. oh, right. It's 2.9.0, two, two oh, and it was released six months ago? Something like that. Eight yeah. months ago, maybe. Yeah, I'll have to try that. 
Yeah, Sometimes give it a try, and if you if you really still continue to have the problem, open a box, open I table. think I had the last version of the original author. Yeah, there have been four four versions I think since then. Yeah. Think so two nine zero is significant. Yeah, and I don't know. I, I obviously I don't know that I fixed that particular pro the problem you were having, but on the flip side of that, I don't know that I didn't. I have read issues online though where. Which mine definitely became. Which? Um, are you using a multi desktop um, switcher, like pager? Oh, like you, you know the like virtual desktops? Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. MSE. Okay, that's your problem. Because it, it does not play well with it, it does not play well with Skyscraper, and I've never been able to figure out why. But it plays perfectly well with Pager. Well, I married the MSC. <laughs> <laughs> well, but but I would still also I don't have the reports from MSC. Yeah. It was actually Skyscraper is the one that I got yeah, the reports from. Right. Yeah. And and so try try the newest one again and see. And I mean, if you can, well, I can I can probably see if if it if it doesn't work, uh, put in a ticket. And then I can get MSC and see if I can reproduce it. Because if I can reproduce it. NetLabs? It's one of the NetLabs problems. Yeah, it's on NetLabs. It's also on Hobbs. The, and the features for L-Switcher, uh, one of the things I like about the normal X-Center window list is that you can filter. You know, so I'm running yeah, sort of a server. Uh, so, and yeah, it wasn't listed there. Oh, uh, yeah. But okay. you, yes, you can also filter out so stuff. Like, like if I don't filter it, it will show X Center. Okay. On the on the bar, but I can go in and pick X Center and filter it out. Yeah. So okay. yes, it also has that feature, and the pop up also filters, uh -huh. and the filters don't have to be the same. Nice. Okay. In other words, if you if you want to see something on the pop up that you don't want to see on the task exactly. bar, yeah. you can you can do that. And you can also switch it to control tab from alt tab if you, if you so desire, or if alt tab is being used for something else on your system. Lucy, I recently had a complaint about a bug that I uh, probably been posted for two months that it hadn't been. Now, the bug had been answered, not by me, but by Steve Levine, about two days after it was posted with a workaround. Okay, so here's, here's where we go. Traps on opening with large PDFs. Okay, probably not an ideal behavior, but, you know, I just was going to label it as a feature in the readme, but, mm -hmm. <clears throat> but it turns out the problem isn't with Lucid. Nothing broken in Lucid broken in Poplar. Well, I don't maintain Poplar. I maintain Lucid. Eh, that didn't change anything, so I fixed Poplar anyways. Actually, I have to give credit where credit is due. Steve Levine fixed Poplar. <laughs> because what Poplar was doing was it was eating all of the semaphore handles in OS2. All 64K of them. <laughs> um, and, you know, it's really hard when you can't open another one. <laughs> so... Sorry, Greg, Poplar is the library that does... Po Poplar is the PDF oh. library that is in Linux. Okay. What was it doing with all those semaphores? <sighs> what, what was happening was, was that it opens threads um, for... Well, each page had its own thread. And it was a semaphore associated with that page. Uh -huh. And then there's a bunch of fonts that do the same thing. And there's a whole bunch of these things. And so as it opened more and more of the classes, eventually it had all these classes open that, that just ate them up. Uh -huh. So, um, and they, it wasn't necessary because you could use, actually, now use a single semaphore for all of them. <laughs> but anyways, I'm sure it's because um, <laughs> Linux is, 
handles probably are 32-bit instead of 16-bit, and so it could eat billions of them. Um, <clears throat> so Linux just crashes on a bigger PDF. Yeah, yeah, but you'd have to have a really big PDF. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so so then what I do is I submit back to Bitworks the fix, and they're gracious enough to go ahead and fix it. But as part of that fix, they decide to update Poplar to the newest Poplar code. Well, guess what? That breaks Lucene because they changed some of the calling of various functions that Lucene used. So I fix all the bad calls, and now Lucene traps Poplar. <laughs> And I know why. It's a, it's a floating point unit issue. It's um, OS2 doesn't mask floating point exceptions, and Linux does. And so now I'm going to have to go back and mask the floating point exceptions. Because it thinks it has a floating point underflow, but it, it, it's meaningless as far as it's working. But the whole problem is, is now I've got somebody complaining because I haven't fixed this bug. And this is what I've gone through to this point. And I, like everybody else, doesn't get paid anything for doing this. <laughs> and I do know why Poplar got updated, though. And it wasn't because I submitted a patch. <laughs> it was because I also sent them 500 euros. <laughs> <laughs> so I really encourage you that if you really want some of this stuff fixed, put up a little money. And I mean, I'm not endorsing that you have to send them 500 euros, but, but you know, we need to support these people because there are very few developers left. And, off, and also, I want you to understand, I'm not asking for donations to me. I do this as a hobby. I'm fine with doing it as a hobby. And you know, getting money for it would actually probably be worse because then somebody would really expect me to do something. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> Thank you. Any questions? <laughs> On uh, is S mouse the standard? Mouse That's the IBM single mouse drive. That's what the S stands for. So when you're doing ECS or later install and put S mouse in, how can you uninstall it? You don't have to uninstall it. If you install a mouse, it will disable S mouse. No, but if you want a different mouse driver, then those two. From it. Well, single mouse is s mouse dot sys. No, I think the mouse. No, it's just the mouse, mouse, mouse dot sys. Oh, you got to start mouse dot sys. I think it was rodent dot sys. Wow, so, rodent. That goes <laughs> back in the back of ways. Well, it has two special features that nobody else, no, no other drivers mm -hmm. do. But it would not work with s mouse. Mm -hmm. You couldn't replace the. I could try other drivers, mouse drivers. I can replace everything. I can replace other mouse drivers, but not that one. I, I'm wondering if the real problem is is that it doesn't work with that rodent doesn't work with the newest DLL. Quite possible. That that you would have to get a, a back leveled DLL. Which DLL are you referring to? Um, WP configure. Yeah. Dot DLL, and there's also another one that has. Mouse or part of mouse is in the name. Yeah, what's the name of that one? I don't remember now off the top of my head. Most potent store. Rat dot sis. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's the, the DLL that, that provides the um, the pages for the mouse on the settings object. I can't remember the name of that. WP mouse maybe. WP. Uh, except it's not all of mouse. It, it's yeah. it's limited to eight characters. So it's WP M O U something. Maybe it's WP M O U S. Yeah. Dots. Dot <coughs> I can we can look on a computer and yeah. figure out what it is. Wow, rodent dots says haven't seen rodent out run rodent in a really, really, really long well, time. Well I'm I'm thinking that it's something from the mid nineties. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, but that would be my other guess is that, yeah. it, that it's something in the, in the so rest of the driver software. If you're doing a bare install, mm -hmm. is there a way you, as you're going through 
not to choose that from. Yeah, you'd pick any mouse. You pick any mouse. By default on Arca OS, when you install a mouse, you have to specifically say, "I want to install S mouse instead of I want to use a S mouse instead of a mouse." With that <coughs> interim step. Well, you, you could try it. Try it first, and then. Yeah, you could try it. Mouse you could you could try it. Um, it does use a different DLL. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just trying to because you know, oh, a mouse yeah. doesn't doesn't uninstall nicely. <laughs> that was a nice way to put it. Yes. <laughs> well, you know, the developer and I had several discussions about That's that. That's the uh, yeah, in, in that the, the final thing was it was never meant to be uninstalled. Yes. Is that is yes. how it is? That's <laughs> it's a yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the I don't know that it would get installed a would get you any farther along the path. Well, you might get away with just the rodent.sys or whatever, I don't remember what the name of it, and just replacing an emos.sys, it might work. Just go into the con config.sys and. Yeah, you need to you need to unregister the AMAS pages though. You wouldn't necessarily, they wouldn't work right, but you wouldn't need to unregister them. I think, I think it depends on what you care about. It's if you just care about the mouse driver working, well, you, you might get away with it. Driver. Yeah, if you just care about the mouse driver working. Um, the answer is you need to test it and find out. And then let us know so we can add it to our repo. So I looked at the two <laughs> drivers. S mouse was the older one. Yeah. So I started with that one because mm -hmm. I figured, oh, A mouse is more complex. Mm -hmm. It might be more difficult to get out of there. And That's it turns true. out S mouse is the one that does Well, right. mainly because I <coughs> really didn't think that anyone would want to, I mean, there are other mouse drivers that IBM shipped for non-PS2 mice, non-PS2 mm -hmm. and non-USB mice. And we even include settings for those in the, um, in the installer. I don't know if we, we actually include additional mouse drivers, but. There were serial mice. Used to be serial well, uh, S-mouse will work with a serial mouse also. That's so way mouse. But, uh, and, for instance, um, a Microsoft bus port mouse and an import mouse, you need to have a special driver for the bus port for the, for the import. Mm -hmm. But nobody even uses those cards. Or those are eight bit add on cards for machines. I mean, where would you even plug one of those cards these days? I know no modern, as in PCI and newer, cards that have import ports or bus mouse ports on them. So I don't know whether we actually include those drivers, although there are entries where you can select those mice in the By well, import, you mean those old, you know? Well, the import the mouse was, it was a, a round connector. Yeah, yeah, the purple and green ones. Well, that's PS2. Oh, those are purple PS2. and green are PS2. Oh, these are Import before was them. before we color-coded, before Microsoft decided that we needed to color-code plugs because people were too dumb to know the difference. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> Did I say that? Uh, the 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 bus mouse um, connector is a round connector with I think thirteen. Oh, I remember those pins. large mouse. Yeah, I remember those things. Yeah. Thirteen pins and a yeah. flat side to key right. it so you can put it yeah. in correctly. And the import is similar to that, but it's got less pins on it, uh -huh. if I remember correctly. It's been a long time since I've seen one. But those cards were only for eight bit cards, and you know you, you put them in a, you know use the back half of the sixteen bit slot in an, in an eighteen machine. But we include those selections in the installer. I don't know that we actually include. I don't remember whether we actually include those drivers. If IBM included the drivers with work four five two, then we include the drivers most likely. But I don't know that that would be a better choice for you than something like AMA. And the original Warp 4 basic mouse drivers not in the newer. Well, the original Warp 4 basic mouse driver is. Um, well, it's half of S mouse. Yeah, it's half of S mouse. Is what it is. Well, half is probably a misnomer, but it's it's the S mouse without the track point stuff. In right. It. Exactly. Exactly. <coughs> so it's yeah. very similar. It's similar, yeah. It's yeah. Other than S mouse is more beat. S mouse has more of it. it add, remember, S mouse adds the additional track point yeah, pages yeah. to your to your mouse object. 
Um, I don't know. That's that's an interesting an interesting thing to, to try. I, I haven't even looked at swap fully swapping out. The four S model side swap my drivers from all kinds. Of yeah, it was all it was all very easy. You just line or two and fix this. And then yeah, try exactly. This one. Exactly. Not anymore. It, it won't play anymore. It, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I, I I mean that's one of those things that we'll, we'll need to experiment and uh, and make notes. And so you is, it, is it a USB mouse? No. Okay. <coughs> yeah, because yeah. that would be even more complicated. Yeah. Because the USB mouse DLL might be the big problem. Yeah. Well, <laughs> since the two features are one. Uh, if you have it set to left hand, DOS windows work correctly because of the bug. If you with the mouse driver, it would only work right hand. Mm -hmm. It would only work left hand everywhere. Mm -hmm. And you can switch it by command line from right to left. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's Because it goes road assist, one, two, three, one man, you want it the other way, two, two, one. And you, there's an executable to set that. Yeah. Right at the command line. Yeah. So you can add that to your batch file when you're starting yeah, something. Yeah, it's like or something. Wow. Yeah, it's yeah. I forgot. It's been a long time. Yeah. You can request it as a feature in any mouse. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Change it to our mouse. <laughs> <laughs> there was only two drivers I found throughout history that do the left hand DOS most correctly. <coughs> for, mm -hmm. for the that was a good driver for the programmable mice yeah. and this road yeah the Kensington driver was, was nice I except the one. Kensington driver won't work with snap drop video driver it will hang and That's they say that and uh, you can try whatever you want I use both, but primarily 90% left because uh -huh. of the keyboard. Uh -huh. You're twice as fast left uh -huh. than you are right. Wow. So if you look at your keyboard, and your mouse in the left hand, you're doing things with the keyboard. The other way, you're moving back and forth all the time. So you're going like this, just like typing, mouse, keyboard, mouse, keyboard. Uh -huh. There's something else you mentioned before, Greg, that I wanted to. Um, there's something I wanted to, to add about it. I don't remember what it was now. Uh, oh, maybe about maybe it was about about Lucy and about Poplar. Um, the other PD, native PDF, well, sort of native PDF viewer that we have on, on OS2 is uh, QPDF View, which is a QT front end for Poplar. They both use the same Poplar engine. The real difference is that Lucid uses a, um, what do they call it, Poplar Legacy is the package. No, but I mean, it, they don't, first of all, they don't use the same engine because there is a Poplar, just Poplar, which is the engine that Lucid uses, yeah. and it's using the latest one. It's you, the legacy doesn't need to be installed for Lucid. That's just something that somebody didn't understand that I had updated it to the 6.6 or to the 5.2, okay. depending on which number you like. Right, 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 right. right. Um, <coughs> the other one runs Poplar QT. Yeah, that's just a QT binding, but it's to the same Poplar library. Yeah, but it's, it, well, actually, they're different levels. So the Poplar QT binding is giving us a different level of Poplar than the Poplar C uh, binding? It appears to. That's interesting. I didn't think it was possible. They, they, they're, all different, they're all different version numbers, at least. Because because the because the um, the Poplar D -D DLL is named Poplar sixty six, right. the Poplar QT is Poplar QT forty two. 
Yeah, but I think that's only that it's the the that version of the QT binding, but I think it still uses the popular 66, popple 66. It may, depending on what they I did. Think it does. But the idea is, those are really the two PDF, well, three PDF viewers, because we have ghost view. Mm -hmm. um, of the three interfaces for viewing PDF files, Lucene is the most native feeling PDF viewer. Because those, those old Acrobat things don't work anymore. Well, they, they probably they probably didn't make them work. They don't. They work they, for old Acrobat files. Yeah, okay. but then it's the file formats that you couldn't. They yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. And form fill-ins, and, <coughs> and that's not to say that Lucy Poplar doesn't is, fill in forms very well. Yeah, yeah, it's not to say that Poplar is, and neither does QPDF view. It's it's better than Lucy. It, it, yeah. it, for some types of forms, yes. If you look at the PDF specification, it's it's. Unbelievably verbose. It's the the document itself is ginormous. Um, so it's no wonder that some non-acrobat, non-Adobe Acrobat applications perform better for some form fillings and some other operations than others. Adobe is the standard. So they fill in all the forms and all the other stuff. The latest version of Adobe acts according to it the specification that, that Adobe has published. Everyone else plays catch up and at different levels of, of the game. Lucene has certain advantages in that it feels like a native OS2 application because it is a native OS2 application. Qt is great, but Qt is not OS2. And Qt, Alex is working on an editor now called Quick, uh, Quick Editor, which is a QT application that feels almost like an OS2 application. It feels almost native, and it even has native OS2 help when you, when you open the help, the help window. QPDF view behaves like a QT application. The other advantage with Z, which I think is the bigger advantage, is you can print to a native OS2 yes. printer, whereas yeah. QT... You have to have a cups printer. It has to be a cups printer. Yeah. For <coughs> so I, the idea is that the it's not what my my initial point that I was making was that Poplar is, is just the engine that rendered the PDF. Yeah. Lucy handles other document types also using different plugins. It's a a plugin based document viewer. So currently it does some graphics formats using GBM. And it does Deja Vu. Deja Vu is popular for um, newspaper articles and things like that. Uh, and it does PDFs. But there are proposals to add additional plugins. And hopefully one day we'll have some additional plugins. <coughs> so that we can view things like man page, Linux man pages. Because yeah. interestingly enough, we don't have, other than Alex's um, poor man's man viewer, man page viewer, we don't have an actual port of man to read on Linux man page. On OS2. Yes, we do. We do? We have a Java app called Multivalent. Yeah, that's Java. That's not a native OS2. Yeah, but we can run it. <laughs> Start it up and it will do man, PDF, doc, text, and it's an HTML browser. So if you've got a PDF with a link in it, hmm. Uh, if the link is written, not everyone is written right, mm -hmm. some will, it will go right to the website. Oh, what's the name of that again? Multivalent. Yeah. And it will also, you, it's also a PDF editor. It can compress, it can remove pages, it can uh, mm -hmm. shrink, it, uh, all the usual editing app, and it's Java 1.4. Wow. Oh. Good to know. Huh? Thank you. Gord was had some wild man reading app that he finally got functioning. <coughs> and he said, told me about it. He says, well, that sounds complicated. I do just opened it up and just opened the file. 
I'm doing it forever. <laughs> interesting, interesting. I, I mean, I really, I suggested to um, Ronald Brill uh, an update to uh, New View to allow us to open man pages. And he suggested a plugin for Lucy to do it instead. I like your idea. Because <laughs> I'm not the one that's going to have to do it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Isn't there a part of more? Like M M R. Sure. I mean, you could say more, and then you're or less. Yeah. I use less because with less you can page back up. Yeah. Because I just page again. But I can't view man pages. Can't view a man page with, with less or more, right? No, nope, it doesn't okay. format. Doesn't format. But um, we have a native uh, bill of info. And a lot of the newer Linux stuff is using info instead of instead of man. Mm -hmm. But we don't have man. So in other words, you can install the RPM for info. In fact, we ship that as part of the base install with, with ARPA OS. Because a lot of applications come with info documentation. And it's kind of silly not to have a viewer for the documentation if you want to use the application. But man doesn't the only the only thing that we've had close to that is Alex's Poor man's man page, mm -hmm. which I use and, and it works, but it's not it's not perfect. It could be that, that man isn't exactly a complicated thing. You wouldn't think you could compile the program and <laughs> all it is is a bunch of tests. It needed it needed a newer cur uh, end curses than we had, uh -huh. so you know I went it, I got stuck in the rut. You know, okay, so I built the newer end curses. I built the newer end curses. Then it needed something else. I started building that, and that, that needed something else. <laughs> and I got stuck about four levels down the line with some GCC errors that I, I finally ran out of the ambition to track down. But, um... Seems familiar. Yeah, Lucy. Yeah. But yeah. I still don't have running with the newest file. Yeah. What do man files look like? Are they, they have, like, trough things in it? What, is, what are they? <laughs> It's just yeah, a markup language. Yeah, it's just markup language. Yeah. Uh -huh. They act with uh, yeah. right. markup. It's just text and uh, what? Uh, in just type all T -Y languages. Yeah. 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 All well, you can do that, that, and then you get all the yeah. formatting stuff in yeah. very similar yeah. to that. So right. it doesn't look any worse than languages. it does without it. So. <laughs> <laughs> the text library, I mean, it took us a few years to huh. get a port of the Unix text library. Yeah, it's, not, it's not that easy. Yeah. Yeah. Unicode. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Which Unicode? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. It, it, it's just it's, for not. It's, it's a pretty big can of worms. We have a we have a cursor support. We do have a cursor support. Okay. Um, I know that um, Kong Young Hun has uh, mm -hmm. some newer cursor. I think his is actually newer than the one that we have in the Yum repository. His stuff really needs to get repackaged as RPM and made available. And it's one of those things that's sort of, it's on the list to do. And it, I just haven't gotten that far yet. I have this whole list of things that I want to package as RPM. And every time I get started, I get bogged down. And I think, OK, who can I ask to do this so I don't have to do it? So, but uh, yeah, so. Anyway, that's what I want to mention about Lucid is that, that Lucid is, is really the front end, Poplar is the back end. For mm -hmm. yes. What does it do? It gives you back like a graphic of the page or how do these, how does that work? I, truth is, I don't know. Okay. It, well, it basically, can, that's what it does is it gives you a screenshot of, of yeah. whatever the it page is. It, for you it just renders, 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 renders it. Lucid renders a window. Yeah. Okay. And Poplar it the thing produces the output that goes in the window. Yeah, that's that simplistically that's the best. And if way it's to a bitmap, then the GBM plugin populates the window. If the GBM <laughs> plugin isn't loaded, it'll tell you that there's no plugin available to render that that track. <coughs> Neil, how are we doing on time? We are uh, in well, our just discussion ha halfway through. Yeah, happy discussion. Yeah, we seem so. to be going well.
Oh, seems, <laughs> seems to be a good discussion. Hey, what's the name of that ARCA ISO plan supposed to be? Um, you know? ARCA int. I 